Hey! What's up guys, it's Little Karibo here once again, with yet another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! No, Little Karibo watches Yu-Gi-Oh! GX! Yu-Gi-Oh! GX doesn't watch Little Karibo, or does it? New conspiracy theory, abridgers are actually being stalked by the uh, content they parody. Team Four Stars are in huge trouble. Getting stalked by Dragon Ball Z, Helsing, Attack on Titan... What else do they do? Dungeons and Dragons. All of the Dungeons and Dragons are stalking Team Four Star as a collective unit. But yeah, this is the 25th episode of Little Karibo Watches Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, and if you just started watching, well, I want to say it's weird to start at episode 25, but I know there are people out there who don't like to go in chronological order, they just go for the newest thing because, you know, that has to be the best example of the content in question. Not necessarily gonna be the case this time with me, but, uh, welcome. This is a show where I sit and watch every week an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, and then I sit down on my ass and I talk to you about how I felt about it, how it made me feel, what emotions it encouraged within me. And if you'd like to watch along, there are various ways in which to watch Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. There's uh, Yu-Gi-Oh!.com, there's Hulu.com, uh, there's some episodes available on YouTube, you might have to rent them or pay for them, not sure. There's uh, Crunchyroll, I think has it, maybe dubbed, uh, and uh, there's DVDs. So, no excuses for not watching Yu-Gi-Oh! GX legally. There's plenty of excuses for just not watching Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Trust me, I used all of them, but now I have no excuse. Before we get started, I wanted to mention something that happened to me, because obviously I've been a bit remiss in attending to my school duties. Not that I really have any, because Dual Academy didn't let me in yet. I don't have one of them shiny Sly for Red uniforms or shiny whatever color uniform. So yeah, I've been slacking. I'm a bit of a Sly for Slacker without the Sly for element. Having said that, I did just get a rather tempting invite by North Academy. Yeah, it turns out that North Academy is kind of low on students uh, due to the climate change currently in effect. Half the school has melted away and they need more people. Personally, I think relocating would fix the problem, but no, they're very adamant that they just need to attract more people. Yeah, it turns out that the person I've been rooming with while I've been staying here on the island was actually a sleeper agent for North Academy. It was sort of a Manchurian candidate situation where they'd had this guy enter my social circle, and then when I said the particular phrase, which was, of course, chaz it up, he awoke and uh, immediately took someone hostage and told me I had to join North Academy. Well, he didn't say it in so many words, though. He, he told me that I had to go find 80 cards in the middle of a volcano, which is on Dual Academy Island, obviously, and then I could join North Academy. It does seem pretty typical of North Academy to orchestrate these elaborate sort of traps for people to fall in and then eventually decide to join their ranks. North Academy has to have at least five potential deaths involved in the application process, otherwise they're not gonna have you. So yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with myself uh, qualifying to uh, enter North Academy. Don't know when I'll have time to climb inside a volcano, but at least the offer is there. Anyway, enough of that bollocks, let's move on to episode 25 of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, entitled The School Duel Part 1. The episode starts at North Academy, and it's a dark and stormy night, and there's lightning striking everywhere. Are they performing some sort of dark ritual at North Academy? Wouldn't surprise me considering the lengths they went to to enlist Chaz, a guy from a different school, into their ranks. Wouldn't surprise me if they enlisted the help of uh, Satan. Or are they doing a Frankenstein-style experiment to uh, give life to the dead people that Chaz had to kill in order to enter North Academy? Some sort of Dr. Chazenstein situation. Would that make Ojama Yellow Igor? Nah, Igor's too appealing. Chancellor Foster has Chaz stood at the top of these enormous stone steps leading into the main structure of North Academy, and he presents Chaz to the entire student body as North Academy's new top duelist. And he offers Chaz North Academy's top dueling cards. There better be at least one Watapon in there. The entire student body of North Academy begins chanting, Chaz! 
It's funny, less than a day ago, all of these guys would have booed Chaz out of the building. Are you sure North Academy isn't populated by fickle wrestling fans? Chaz accepts the cards, turns around, and says that Duel Academy is toast. Okay, but will that toast be part of a delicious egg witch? Hungry students wish to know. Speaking of delicious things, the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX opening theme. Always make sure to enjoy a hearty side of the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX opening theme as part of a delicious Yu-Gi-Oh! GX fest. Back at Duel Academy, Jaden is summoning any number of dummy thick superheroes. Smart man, you guys come out too. Yeah, I don't blame you, Jaden. Jaden gives his elemental heroes a pep talk, saying that they're gonna whoop whoever North Academy throws at them. Can you imagine if Yami Yugi was like, okay, get all my duel monsters out. Okay, guys, the fate of the world is at stake. I need you all to be on your A-game. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Cyrus then runs in and tells Jaden that North Academy just showed up, and there's a meet and greet happening at the docks. A meet and greet? What, is Chancellor Foster signing copies of his autobiography, entitled How I Learned to Trick People to Come to My School by Shooting at Them from My Submarine Nearby? You get free Ojama Yellow with every book. He hasn't sold any. We then see the North Academy submarine at the docks, where Chancellor Shepard and Crowler have shown up to greet Foster. Foster tells Shepard that he's finally had time to get over the loss that Duel Academy handed to North Academy last year. Yet nothing says getting over the loss quite like poaching one of Duel Academy's students via submarine espionage. They both agree to a spirited duel between the two schools. Oh, it'll be spirited because there's gonna be duel spirits involved. And also because of all the spirits that I will have to drink in order to enjoy it. Jaden then interrupts and says, enough with how you doing, he wants to know who he's gonna be dueling. Jaden, so you're Duel Academy's Phenom. Phenom? That's the coolest thing I've ever been called. Yeah, you usually get called stuff like mop-headed so I can imagine. Jaden still wants to know when he's going to meet his opponent, and then Chaz reveals himself, much to Jaden's confusion. And oh good, they brought Kyle along. I was worried, because I wasn't quite sure if he'd be okay by himself at North Academy without a babysitter. Well, why are you here? For the duel. I think it's sold out. Is that how Duel Academy makes most of its money? It, it charges for admission to any of the duels that are performed at the school. That's kind of messed up, Seto Kaiba, owner of Duel Academy but 100% in character. The penny finally drops and Jaden asks Chaz when he transferred to North Academy. Since when did you transfer? Since I stopped getting the respect I deserved here. That's, That's right. right. Yeah, you're getting way more respect from this new school that tricked you into joining. A couple of helicopters begin descending from overhead and inside one of them, we see Chaz's brothers. Chaz calls up to them and we learn that their names are Slade and Jagger. <laughs> Or were they named by a DC Comics writer from the 1980s? Nothing says high class like Slade or Jagger. And speaking of Jagger, is he the one that we've got the moves like? Chaz's brothers tell him that they're here to celebrate his big duel victory. And all of a sudden, a number of camera crews appear out of nowhere and shove their cameras in all the students' faces. That's it, beautiful. Just act natural. It's Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, mate. You're asking a lot. The teachers understandably ask what the hell's going on. And the director says that this duel is going to be broadcast prime time across the world. How's that possible? Like, I mean, time zones do exist in the Yu-Gi-Oh! world, right? Did they duel to get rid of those? What happened? In the production truck, we then see my personal nightmare, several Jaden faces on every screen. No way! Me on TV? Yeah, but only until the end of season three and then we're just gonna stop making it. There's then a brief montage of Jaden's face being broadcast across the world to various large television screens, which is weird because obviously the school duel hasn't started yet, so why is this being broadcast to everybody? We see a crowd of enthusiastic duel fans reacting wildly to Jaden's face. Yes, I too would have a loud and animated reaction if I had to see that shit on my TV. In the locker room, Chaz accuses his brothers of setting up this broadcast. Oh, what tipped you off, Sherlock? Them arriving at the exact same time. They concede that they did set this up so that the world could see that Chaz is well on his way to becoming Duel Monster's best. World domination is ours for the taking if we all do our part, Chaz. And we have. Now it's your turn, bro. 
to conquer the world of dual monsters. What world did you guys conquer? The world of having ridiculous names? Chaz's brothers accuse him of dropping out of Duel Academy to get away from them, and they say that he's always been the slacker of the family. But they tell Chaz that he can still turn things around and prove that he's supreme, and to do so, they offer him a briefcase full of some really expensive trading cards. They're the most expensive out there, so you have no excuse to lose. Ah uh, yes, because as we all know and have learned from watching this show, that the more money a card costs, the better it will do in any deck, regardless of the setup. That's just dueling science. Chaz's brothers apply even more pressure to Chaz, and he looks extremely stressed out by this. We then see Jaden running through the halls of Duel Academy with a hairbrush and a spray can in his hands, clearly trying to hunt down winged Karibo, who fled when Jaden suggested that they give him a perm. Man, if I'd known I was gonna be on TV, I would've combed my hair. I might have even watched. I probably would have even showered. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that we now have the information that Jaden Yuki tends to walk around Duel Academy smelling like old egg witches. Jaden then runs past a restroom where Chaz is inside beating himself up and telling him he has to man up. No, it's Chaz it up, not man it up. Don't you know your own catchphrases? Jaden stands there in the doorway and just kind of watches while Chaz has an emotional breakdown. I don't know how to get my game on in this situation, so I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Just go in there and tell him to get his therapy on. Oh, I now realize that Chaz Princeton is the character I most identify with in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Huh. Chaz keeps ranting to himself desperately. It's actually really quite sad. And Jaden st still stands there in the doorway, just sort of watching passively. It's easily the most subtle he's ever been in his entire life. Jaden slinks off as Chaz continues ranting to himself. You can win, and that you can keep winning <laughs> over and over, that you're the best. Oh, he's the Bakugo of the show. In the duel arena, we see that the camera crews have set up various crane apparatus within the duel arena as the crowd is excited for the duel to start. And the director encourages the crowd to be really lively and get really into the card game because this is being broadcast worldwide. Is a duel between two first year students that were previously in the same school like a week ago Really that thrilling for a worldwide audience? Most people will be switching over to Hollyoaks by now. The North Academy students continue to show their support for Chaz by chanting his classic Chaz it up catchphrase, and Foster and Shepard are sat next to each other in the crowd. Same bet as usual, right Shepard? You do remember. Absolutely. After all, old friend, it's what makes this all worthwhile. Turns out the loser has to sacrifice their youngest student to the Shadow Realm. It's actually a very dark contest. Foster and Shepard have a little chuckle off, which is something else. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Elsewhere, Chumley and Cyrus are trying to get Jaden hyped up for his duel, but he just can't muster up the excitement. I overheard Chaz a bit earlier and it's just too bad one of us has to lose, you know? I'm starting to kind of understand where he's coming from and it's not exactly an easy place. Hold the phone. Is Jaden Yuki actually starting to experience empathy for another human being? This is fing wild. As Jaden speaks, we then see the North Academy gang are all surrounding Chaz and touching him like he's their messiah or something. The passion of the Chaz. Chancellor Shepard and Chancellor Foster announce the commencement of the school duel, and I just now realize that Chancellor Foster looks like a guy who ordered a Naruto cosplay off of eBay, and when it showed up, it was not only sh it was also about five sizes too big. Crowler introduces the duelists to the viewers at home in his unique Crowler-esque way. These are two duelists that I know personally, and personally I just adore them. <laughs> Why do you even need Ojama Yellow when you have Crowler right there? He's just as upsetting looking and 10 times as entertaining. We then see various shots of people watching this duel around the world and apparently it's being broadcast to a giant stadium full of people who are watching it, who went to a, they went to a stadium to watch it on a TV. Is that a thing people do? Having said that, I've been to several WWE events where it felt like I was doing just that. Crowler introduces Jaden as Jaden Yuki, which, which is good. And Cyrus calls out support for his friend Jaden Yuki while all of Jaden's other friends just sort of stare silently straight ahead. Crowler attempts to introduce Chaz with, uh, 
rather limited results. I'll introduce myself, you scrub. I beg your pardon? Scrubs don't have PhDs in dueling! Actually, I'm pretty sure if a scrub was gonna get a PhD in anything, it would be in that. Crowler then realizes that he's got himself tangled in the microphone cord, and he adds, um, Although not tying might have been a better major. Okay, first of all, that isn't a knot. And secondly, do you think that having a PhD in not tying wouldn't make you a scrub? Chaz gets on stage and says that he doesn't really need an introduction. <laughs> okay, so he just wanted to insult Crowler for no reason. Fair play. Chaz tells the crowd that they're looking at the new and improved North Academy Chaz. Dude, you spent like one day there. Did you even have a single class with them? And what is Chaz here to do? And I'm here to to Jazz it up! That's right, say it again! Jazz it up! Jazz it up! Jazz it up! Yes, according to Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and North Academy, nothing will earn you the respect of your peers quicker than humiliating all of them in a card game in front of everyone they know. Chaz and Jaden exchange remarks and then get set to duel each other. Chaz draws his first card. Ask and you shall receive. Okay, don't just, don't whip your card in my face like that, Chaz, if you can help it, please. I'm trying to do a review and it's very distracting when you whip your card around like that. Chaz summons Masked Dragon in defense mode. And if you ask me, he shouldn't be wearing a mask on his face. He should be wearing a mask on that upsetting chest he's got going going on there. What is that? See, there's somebody in dire need of a dual vest to cover that up. Jaden draws his first card. Ah! Okay, no, stop waving your cards in my face. It's unnecessarily dramatic, and I know it makes you feel cool, but it is not cool. It's very distracting. Jaden summons elemental hero Bastina and unfortunately, the censoring makes her cleavage look like a strange, shapeless red mass. Some sort of weird wormhole constructed out of poorly applied red paint right there, where her boobies are. Actually, on second thought, I should say Slayer Mode. For the record, I woke up in Slay Mode. Jaden destroys Chaz's Defense Mode Masked Dragon, and Chaz declares that Jaden took the bait. Turns out when Masked Dragon is sent to the graveyard, Chaz can summon any dragon from his deck with 1,500 or less attack points. So Chaz summons Armed Dragon Level 3. Uh, level? Yeah, level. Pay attention in class, you big turquoise-headed fool. Your best friend used Winged Karibo level 10 in episode 4 against Chaz, but apparently it wasn't confusing for you then. I just wonder where Chaz ever got such a powerful card. You wonder where he got the card? Maybe he opened a booster pack. Where do you think people get these cards from? Some sort of exclusive bank vault. It's not that difficult, guys. In the crowd, Chancellor Shepard is shocked that Foster would give Chaz some of North Academy's top dueling cards. Why? Why wouldn't they give him good Why didn't you give Jaden some good cards, Shepard? Foster doubles down on his decision. I did what I had to do. I told you, Shepard. I want that prize, and I'm going to get it. All you did was give him some trading cards to use. What? This isn't some sort of illicit deal that went down. What is the big deal, guys? You guys are treating this like it's more controversial than North Academy literally scuttling Chaz's boat and luring him to North Academy under ulterior motives. But no, you gave him some cards. <gasps> what? Shepard tries to counteract this by aggressively cheering for Jaden, and Jaden reacts to this like he's a Twitch streamer trying his best to ignore an obnoxious person in the chat room. Jaden it up! Jaden it up! Yeah, uh, sure. Anyway, sweet card, Chaz. And I should mention that as Jaden and Chaz interact throughout this duel, we see plenty of empty seats in the crowd. So I don't know what Jaden's sold out comment was about earlier. Chaz draws a card. <laughs> okay, seriously, stop it. You're getting on my a little bit. Stop putting cards in my face, thank you. Chaz explains that during his standby phase, he can send one monster from his hand to the graveyard in order to upgrade Armed Dragon level 3 to level 5. And when he does so, we see that Armed Dragon level 5 looks not dissimilar to Armed Dragon level 3, except you're much more likely to want to buy an action figure of it. Bastion offers Jaden this word of caution. Be careful, Jaden. 
By leveling up, Arm Dragon's power has substantially increased, and he was plenty powerful before. Good thing we have this math genius here with us so that he could explain that five is better than three. Jaden activates his trap card, Hero Ring, which equips Bastinatrix with a big red shield, which protects the sensors from having to do anything to her cleavage. Chaz explains that this trap card will be of no help to Jaden, as Arm Dragon Level 5's effect allows Chaz to discard a monster from his hand to the graveyard, and then destroy any monster on his opponent's side of the field with equal or lesser attack. And Arm Dragon Level 5 shoots f***ing missiles everywhere, and they all converge on Bastinatrix and she's dead. Clearly they were cheek-seeking missiles. Chaz then attacks directly with Arm Dragon Level 5, taking Jaden down to 1600 life points, and also sending him flying across the field whereupon he lands on his head. It's okay guys, don't worry, his thick mane of Karibo style hair kept him protected from any concussion. It's like having a naturally formed motorcycle helmet on your head at all times. Jaden would actually be very good in 5Ds. Chaz gloats over his domination of Jaden, and then Jaden pops back up and compliments Chaz's attack. Although, I gotta say, I think for the next TV broadcast, I'd like to arrange to have a stuntman. <laughs> okay, it's possible I was wrong and he did get a concussion. Do we have an EMT in the duel arena? No? No medical staff whatsoever? Okay, keep going. Chaz's brothers look on with vested interest. Not dual vested interest, unfortunately, but still interest. I just hope he doesn't win too fast. Huh? Hey, the longer he thrashes this kid, the more we make in commercial revenues. <laughs> uh, typical influencers there trying to skew their content for maximum profit. By the way, please click on any ads you see throughout this video, wherever they appear. And please watch it to the very end and like, favorite, and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Jaden then uses his polymerization to fusion summon Elemental Hero Tempest. An elemental hero with an ass so thick that you could write the entirety of William Shakespeare's The Tempest on it. Jaden has Tempest destroy Armed Dragon Level 5, but before Jaden can breathe a sigh of relief, Chaz activates his trap card Call of the Haunted and brings it right back. Do you believe in ghosts? Well, you're about to, because this card lets me summon back any monster I want from my graveyard. Take that, skeptics. You don't believe in ghosts? Well, Chaz just activated Call of the Haunted and brought back Armed Dragon Level 5. So what are you gonna do now? Huh? Skeptics? And following up from proving definitively that ghosts do exist, Chaz makes this move. Now! Okay, do you have some sort of problem where you can't just draw a card like a normal person? Why do you keep throwing them in my face when I'm watching the duel, man? Chaz attempts to use Arm Dragon Level 5's ability to get rid of Elemental Hero Tempest, but then Jaden uses Defusion at the last second, and all the missiles split off in different directions while Elemental Hero Tempest is split into the three Elemental Heroes that comprise it. Clearly the missiles were just too confused as to which butt to go after, because they're all just so great. But then Chaz attacks Spark me! Spark me! Spark me! Which leads to this rather erotic shot of Sparkman leaning backwards in pain. Well, I don't know about you, but something just awoke within me. Why can't I please my Sparkman quite like that? Chaz then successfully summons Armed Dragon Level 7, who is much like Armed Dragon Level 5, except much huger. Chaz's brothers are stunned. That's strange. That monster wasn't in the suitcase I gave Chaz. Huh, what? Why would you suddenly be surprised after he's been summoning armed dragons this entire duel? Why would this be the thing that made you go, oh, where'd he get that card from? Oh, you think the guy with armed dragon level three and level five also has level seven? Shock! Chancellor Shepard once again tries to get the crowd to chant Jaden it up, and the crowd boos him in response. Oh, he's like the one guy trying to get a CM Punk chant going at a wrestling show. Jaden is so excited to see Arms Dragon level 7 that he completely misses the elemental hero Avion Bum that is right in front of him. Isn't that just the way though? I feel like all of us at one point in our lives have been so distracted by an Arms Dragon level 7 that we've missed the elemental hero Avion Butt that is just right in front of us. We've all been there, right? Chaz is disgusted by Jaden's joviality and says that this is exactly why he'll never be a champion. It takes discipline to win. 
You need to have a sense of duty. Yeah, nothing quite says a sense of duty quite like defecting to North Academy after one f King Day. Jaden summons Rottweiler in defense mode and sets a card face down, and then Chaz begins to activate Arm Dragon Level 7's effect, which impresses the spectators to no end. Oh no, that'll leave Jaden wide open! Damn me! That is one impressive special power. There you see, nothing phases Zane, or excites him or elicits any kind of emotion, really. Chaz uses Arm Dragon Level 7's ability to destroy Jaden's monsters. Go, serrated sonic disc! Okay, now that's an impressive attack name. Jaden points out that this activates Rottweiler's special ability, which allows him to put polymerization and one elemental hero into his hand. But Chaz still has Armed Dragon Level 7's attack left, and he does so, attacking Jaden with Dragon Talon Terror. And those are some pretty huge talons. Jaden braces for impact as Chaz's brothers look on deviously, and Chaz laughs maniacally. And that's the end of part one. What do you reckon, guys? Do you think that North Academy was right to uh, put all their eggs in one basket, uh, the basket in question being Chaz this time, uh, and hoping that he would be able to overcome Jaden with all the uh, best cards that the school had to offer? Or do you think Jaden Yuki relying on his tried and true tactic of summoning some splendiferously buttocked elemental hero monsters and making some pretty jammy draws will win the day? It's the fight between bubbly dumb luck and a guy who was jaded and was given a bunch of things. That classic duality of man. What did you think? I rather liked it. I was kind of digging, exploring armed dragons, different effects and stages and levels and all that. That was kind of a fun little gimmick. And uh, of course, it's neat to see Jaden and Chaz going at it. I mean, I would have been happier to see somebody else, but now that Chaz has had this little mini character arc, it's kind of cool to see them dueling in a somewhat different context for, for somewhat different stakes, more personal. So yeah, I appreciate this episode as it gave Chaz uh, a bit of humanity, and it even is adding some, uh, some layers to Jaden as a character, which uh, was unexpected this early in the show. I was thinking it would come much later, but hey, it's nice to see Jaden sympathizing with what Chaz is going through, honestly. Before I go, I want to give a whopping Armed Dragon Level 7 shout out to all of our Patreon pledges, and especially all you guys at the bottom of the screen. All of you, every single one of you, uh, really makes a difference and makes us able to produce content as regularly as we're able to, and uh, I want to say thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for all your support. Even if you're not supporting us through Patreon, uh, if you've ever supported us before, or if you're even just watching the videos, I want to say thank you so much to all of you. You guys are the best. You guys are, are fantastic. I wouldn't trade you guys for the world. Thank you. Well, without further ado, I guess I better start climbing that volcano and uh, collecting 80 trading cards because I can't get into North Academy otherwise. And as we're seeing from this episode, North Academy treats its students well. So long as you're a student that's come from a different school and is better than everyone else in your school. So I think I'm in. I'll catch you later. That's it. Beautiful. Just act natural. That is one impressive special power.